Yeah. You would go that way. Okay, so the tweeter is definitely a lot more complicated. I would think. Maybe I have supper and have a think. So one thing I've been thinking about pondering and seems to be working out is you can break down the circuit into chunks. So for example, these three components have to be connected and they have to be connected in this order. Just well, I mean everything has to be connected in the right order, but what we can do is you can focus on doing this first, and then you end up with this, right? You can see there's the, the capacitor, which is on this side. In this case it's it's quite nice because it, it mirrors the look. You know, we've got the inductor a little bit on the side, but it's still on the bottom because you can see it connects from there to there. It doesn't really matter that this is here or not, say, here. I mean, it would be kind of hard to, to do it uh, exactly the way it's been drawn based on the shape and the size of these things. But you can see, then we end up with uh, the resistor on top. But that's just for this chunk here of the, this is the, the tweeter crossover. And what I was thinking is, take these, these two capacitors, the resistor and the inductor, and solder them together. So yes, we've got the soldering iron, it's just about warm. That's looking nice, 350 degrees Celsius. Yep, pretty toasty. Don't be too close to the paper. Anyway, so I'm going to try and put that together as, as a unit. So basically, this lot here. So what I was thinking of doing is putting these two together like that. I know the leads are long, but then I could bend them um, to the shape I want afterwards. And here, that's the 4.7, is this little one here, this is 4.7 on it, and this one this is 10 microfarad. And these are 0 to 2 milli, milli henry. So the thinking is basically this for now. And I'm actually going to solder these together, because I think that'll be easier. Let's turn the tip a bit, turn that off. And then the trick is actually to heat the piece of metal, in this case the uh, copper wire, looks like copper at least. And then on the other side you can apply the solder. There we go. So let's turn that one. And let's do that one as well. There we go. So now, got those like that. Ooh, and I bought this uh, well, a couple of months back. I need to use it away for making my life easier. Now we can uh, use this helping hand to hold the two things together. Yeah, that one's not going anywhere. I actually only need one one extra hand. I've got my own hand, so don't use the other one. There you go. That's how easy it is to put wires together. And yes, you can add a bit more solder, but you do have to wonder that worry that the rest of the joint will um, come loose. In which case, I suppose using the other hand might make a, make more sense. Doing. So that's the one problem that's under some sort of spring tension. We can also use that to work for us. Yeah. And the idea is to try and heat both together at the same time. Like that. Now we have another problem. Here we go. That, I think it's not going anywhere. That's a lot more solder on there. Cool. Let's think about this a little bit. This is where it becomes a bit more creative. How could we rearrange these to be more compact and you know, but still adhering to the circuit diagram? Because we could do something we could do something like that. So now we've got this in a long in a long shape, but you could also go like so. Right? And that's the same electrically. Interesting ideas, right? I mean that layout is exactly these three here. And they well there's the resistor. Bang. So that's those four there now. To be frank, I want to keep my inductor as far away from the other inductors as possible. That's gonna go something like that, and then this is gonna go something like that. So what I might end up doing is putting this one like that, because that is still the same. Camera got full the storage, in other words. That's not coming off in a, in a hurry. <laughs> How's that for an even more compact look? That can still be soldered like that, and then uh, it'll be good. 
it almost helps to think of um, this type of joint that I'm doing here, this like T junction, either like a T junction or uh, a triangle. Uh, I'm not going to bend these two because I've already soldered them. So we can just cut that bit off. Kind of decided that's how it's going to happen and that's how it's going to work, and that's the end of that. So that's already quite interesting. Looks like this um, wire on here is coated. Let's try to scratch that off a bit. Oh yeah, it's definitely got some sort of coating on. That would have been good to know first. <laughs> Let's just take that back off. See, the solder just would not stick to that. Okay, so we strip that off. Oh, look at that, that's the problem. To avoid getting into that kind of situation again, is to come here and tin this, try and tin this wire first. Yeah, see now the solder sticks to it. Good enough. So sometimes small fingers are better, right? So this is these one, two, three, four components. The resistor comes in, goes into this first capacitor here, uh, comes out the capacitor, and then breaks out here, there we go, with the inductor, which off it goes to ground, and then this also continues, because it's, it's like a T-junction or a three-way triangle kind of, if you want to look, think about it that way, and then it goes into this capacitor and then out. So it ends up looking like that, even though it's laid out like that. Excuse me, I hope this thing will actually fit into the, uh, <laughs> the speaker cabinet. I was going to start to think, like, I don't know how I'm going to get this right. So that's basically a third, and there's another third. This is the bit that goes right on the end, the last third of it. This is, like, say, the first third and the middle third of these bits here, which I need to put together. It's literally just these three. So that's not uh, too bad. So I think I'll get this one um, going the right kind of way. She would like to have it uh, more readable in case anybody ever has to work on this thing, including future me. You, know, you never know if you're going to, like, cook a resistor or... I mean, it shouldn't. It's a 10 watt resistor, which is more than ample. Uh, I mean, this is a little 5 watt resistor. This is the tweeter uh, section, so this 5 watt resistor should actually survive. Also, it's only 2.2 ohms, so yeah, it's not exactly going to have a lot of resistance there. Yeah. We do have a bit of a problem there because I have already wound this inductor wire on here, so I don't know how. Might have to scrape some bits and pieces off it. Lesson learnt. I uh, think that a coiled wire probably has some insulation on it to stop it shorting itself out. Wouldn't be much of a coil otherwise. So, scrapey, scrapey. Let's switch to the better stuff. Hopefully, that'll help. Mm, not really. Things I wish I knew. Okay, well, let's try undo this inductor. It's not the inductor, is it? Oh, yes, it is. Somebody foxed me because they tinned the ends of these wires, and I thought you can just tin them and you'll be good. It doesn't quite work that way. I think maybe a bit of sandpaper would be best, but. It's also be tricky once you've done this kind of winding on it. You know, it's no longer straight. Right, let's take all the this one here. So we have our 4.7 ohm resistor. We have our capacitor, which is the 0 0.8, 82, whatever my preferred. And we have our inductor, which is. There we go, the 1.5 milli Henry. So, do that one. We'll start with the, these two here. Plan to orientate like this. You kind of don't want to look through the middle of these at one of your other inductors, so you have to go like that. This might end up being a long skinny one. Um, I think that one goes to ground, that's also going to ground. 
So we could actually wrap it like that. Which I'm happy with like that. Okay, where's my sandpaper box? Where's my sandpaper? Trying to get this insulated coating off. I think if they dip this stuff in something other than a clear lacquer, it might be useful. You be able to easily spot that you missed something. Maybe that's just me uh, being a bit uh, sore about having to redo the other bits. That's the middle piece. Makes it easier to solder to. There we go. Side cutters are super handy. Stack it up like that. Is that for 3D? How not to solder? Okay, I definitely need to work out how to get this stuff off yet better. But basically, that is a fairly complete circuit. For this bit here. Yeah. 